Back in the IPL studio and we have a special guest. We always love people coming in to see us at the Jess Address. John Erks from Kunana Rotary. Eriks. Yeah. You Sorry, said it wrong. I That's right. I still love you. Yeah, no, we forgive it. Thank don't we, John? God. Yeah, <laughs> I'd be in trouble if you didn't love me. I'd be the only person. <laughs> um, thanks so much for joining us. I'm just going to ask you to pop that mic right close so that we can hear you. That's better. And tell us, you've got some big stuff happening in Quinana at the moment. Yes, the the biggest one is the uh, Quinana Rotary Community Fair. That's on Saturday, the 11th of November. 10 till 2, uh, down at Callista Oval in Wolverine Crescent, Callista. Uh, we've got 140 to 160 stallholders still coming in. We've got 14... You're kidding! Vendors. That's a lot that of That is a lot. Yeah. Yes. We started uh, two years ago with uh, 90. Uh, the original fair was about 50. Mm-hmm. So we started with 90, had 120 last year and, and heading towards 160 this year. That's phenomenal. Wowzers. Yeah. That's a lot of small that's business. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like, what kind business, of... Uh, well, there's, um, you know, ju- there's uh, like, uh, jewellery, mm-hmm. uh, homemade crafts, paintings, basically a lot of mums and dads that have been doing their own thing mm-hmm. and coming that's along mm-hmm. and displaying them. Yeah, yeah beautiful. Uh, yeah, so... You know, we'll have a, a, a sponsored by Fremantle Ports, a, an area of uh, set aside for kids mm-hmm. with a white picket fence around it, and, and they're going to have a whole heap of things happening there. Free uh, entertainment is so valuable for families, and it just yeah. adds value to your event because that money that's not spent on entertainment yeah. uh, for the kids is actually then pocketed within the small business section, mm-hmm. and you know, you you're boosting the economy that way, aren't you? Yeah, yeah well, we've got buskers that'll entertain. We've got nine-hole mini-golf. We've got all the things that have been provided by Fremantle Port. The City of Quinana have given us sponsorship to help us cover overheads. And then the Bendigo Bank have come down and they've got ten tables uh, and bring your own picnic lunch and we'll have, uh, like, a fluffy toy teddy bear picnic. Oh, lovely. So oh, fantastic. Toy. Mm-hmm. And so that's all Bendigo Bank, our community bank. In yeah. Canada. So, yeah, it's all, uh, it's all going to be a great day. And it sounds fantastic, and I love things like this that get people out of their houses and kind of interacting with their community because that's something that's a little bit lost these days. Yeah, la- last year's event, uh, it was absolutely buzzing. So, yeah, and do you know what I love? is that this community fair is for everyone. You've got small business, you've got free kids activities, you've got buskers there, you've got something for everyone yep. to come down and enjoy. And it doesn't cost you to get in. Mm. No, no, all free. And there's parking on site. So, oh, yeah. that's, that's, so, yeah. <laughs> that's the bit that got me most excited. Is that terrible? No. <laughs> is that you can actually park. Like I think there's you so many things there. where you just can't yeah. get to and then yeah. you're stressing about and you're already like almost divorcing your husband by the time you get to walk <laughs> into the venue because you've been fighting over a parking spot and why can't you just indicate? Yep, okay. Well, the, one, one thing <laughs> I love about it, we've been doing this for a long time and, and we one of the first compliments we get is the attendance of the parking, yeah. how organised it is and how trouble-free it is and, and how much people... And I think, hang on, the fair hasn't started yet. Yeah. <laughs> it's only just arrived. Well, you know well you're that's a, a good, good start, day. isn't it? A very good we've, start. We've peaked already. <laughs> yeah. Um, obviously, this is run by the Quinana Rotary, but yes. there are other organisations like Fremantle Ports. Who would you Fremantle like to give Ports. thanks to for an event like this? Yeah, there's... Uh, well, be, we're working with Befriend. They're a community organisation... Uh, in Quinana, uh, Inga's helping out there. Um, we've got friend or, or partners. Kim, Kim is the mainstay who organises all the uh, the stores, and she's a partner of Rotarian. Uh, City of Quinana, obviously, with their sponsorship, uh, and uh, we you try and use local business where we can. Yeah, try and support them and and pay for them out of the grants that we've got. Yeah, so fantastic. So, um, but no, it's uh, it's we're really looking forward to it. So, so two weeks, ten till two, Saturday the eleventh of November. That's it. That's Looks it. awesome. And then the other one we were talking about was the um, the fire brigade, the Quinana um, uh, South Bush Fire Brigade, are uh, having an open day uh, down at uh, their shed, down at their uh, South Volunteer Bushfire Station, mm-hmm. and that's on Sunday the 5th of November. Oh, that's this weekend. This four. weekend. Yeah, this okay. weekend, and Rotary will be um, cooking the sausages, 
the Quinana community. You do bank. that well, don't you? <laughs> well, we're, cool. we're a really yeah. premium sausage. <laughs> Sizzler. <laughs> the Bendigo Bank will be providing the sausages, so it's all part of that one big community coming together again. So yeah. do we know what happens at the – is it Firehouse Open Day? Yeah, it's a – they're talking about making people fire ready. Mm-hmm. Uh, in summer, it's them. a it's a popular topic of conversation, mm. isn't it? Because we have seen um, Australia suffer from bushfires that have just been demolished areas. Yep. Um, so yeah, it is a it's a big topic at the moment. Um, yep. And having an event like this makes you more aware of how you can be more fire safe, can't you? Yep. So it's all yeah. about preparing your property. Is that what it's yes. about? Your property, regardless and, of whether yeah. it's, whether it's rural or yeah, not and, suburban, and is not the other one. Resilience of the people to fires and, and also gives us an opportunity to thank those volunteer mm, fires. Yeah. They do a great job. Absolutely. So good, good and job. recruitment too. You can be a part of the volunteer uh, fire brigade too, which you know they're always looking for community members that they can call on mm. um, to help in times where. You know, there is yeah. big fires within, hopefully, Touchwood, not Western Mallory, Australia, yeah. but, you know, other parts of Australia as well. So they will be educating people on how, what what pathway to take if they want to do something like that as oh, well. Fantastic. I would imagine. Um, yes. I have this, like, strong memory of I went to Star of the Sea and what, at, our, at our fates every year, the fire truck used to come and spray us all with the foam and then with the water to wash us all off. It's like one of my great childhood memories. I hope they do something like that there. We, and we've got the fire <laughs> truck and the SES volunteers at the fair as well. Oh, cool, so cool. Come and have a look at that as well. Yeah. How much within the Rotary is relationship building with people like the Bendigo Bank, as you said, um, who are obviously a strong supporter of Rotary. Um, yep. By the sound of it, they're involved with the community fair as well as the Sunday Fire Day as well. Um, so how much of that is, you know, community relationship building? It's it's all. I mean, Bendigo Bank is, is a different uh, structure to the other banks. We, we are a very old bank. We've been going over 100 years. Uh, but we've put $250 million back into the community wow. Australia-wide. Wow. It, it's a huge thing. Mm. What happens is that the community, you've got Bendigo, which has its own corporate branches, but it has community branches owned by locals. And the deal is that 80% of the profits has to go back to the community. So, How yeah. many? There's not one bank that yeah. I can mention that does that. There isn't another. No. Yeah. It's, it's a brilliant model. Uh, it, it's actually social enterprise before the word social enterprise was even invented. Yeah. And people in America are looking at this and saying, wow, you know, we, we need to look at that. Mm. I mean, there's, uh, take for instance, a, a, a branch in Collie that's been going for a long time. They were giving away a million dollars mm. a year. Wow. A year. You know, and, and we're, we've only been going for eight years. And mm-hmm. It's been a growing process, but we are growing exponentially. Uh, we're into profit now, and in uh, January, February, we're going to be starting to give away money to our community group, so we'll be calling for yeah. applications. Uh, but we also worked with the city and the Quinana Community Chest, which is another organisation that Carol and I are, are involved in, and the three of us used to put in $20,000 a year for grants to mm-hmm. community groups. So, yeah, Bendigo is, is going to be the big player yes. in that space. It's so good. I don't know if you heard, but the Shonkies, the Shonky Awards have been um, given out yesterday. And the Shonky Awards is for people or businesses who aren't doing the right thing. And one of those was given to Coles and Woolworths for announcing a record profit this year amongst a cost of living crisis and it's places like Bendigo Bank, Bank that need that praise and they need an opposite award of the Shonkies. Well, I can tell you that we've just won um, a, an award which is an Australia-wide award for the most trusted bank. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Especially when you think about banks making all these mm. profits. Yeah. Um, and you're talking about a bank that directly funnels those profits back into the community it lives in. Mm. So the people that bank there know that they're actually making their community a better place. Exactly. Yeah. And, and all of the directors on, on the board, and they've been there most of them for eight years, uh, we're all volunteers, like, and, and a lot of us came from Rotary. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was the four of them were Rotarians when we started off, uh, and 
basically the same board for eight years. And they are just good people that are interested in their community. Mm. What a thing to be proud of. Like, really, that's so fantastic. It is, really. And and the way you speak about it, I think that yeah. you don't really associate speaking about a bank with using the term we. It's always like an us and them. So the way you speak about it makes it really seem like it's, a community thing. It's why you get up in the morning, you know, mm. because um, the, the good guys, uh, Rotary and... You know, the community people, the bank, uh, especially Bendigo Bank, we're all working for the same thing, to make mm. our community a better place and to help people. Yeah, oh, love that. Thank you. So what else is going in on Rotary? Um, you, you did speak about the fact that, you know, you do want more people on board within Quinana Rotary, don't you? How do people get involved? Yeah, we, um, it's, it's generally by invitation, but and, and it used to be very restrictive to people who were in business uh, or senior management. Now, that's changed. It's, it's more, can you help the community yeah uh, uh, bearing in mind that you uh, when you come into a, a group of 30 people you've got to have some synergies to make sure you do enjoy it otherwise mm. you're not going to stay there there may be people that are totally sporty that arrive and say well this isn't what i want to do or people totally arty yeah uh, but this is more community involvement and, and commu- growing the community <laughs> He's a busy man. He's getting messages. His phone's <laughs> ringing while he's here. I'm just glad it's not me this time. <laughs> as long as it's not someone listening to us right now that's telling you, mention this, mention yeah, well, this. They, they'll, they'll be ringing me and saying, don't forget to talk about Timor Leste, okay. uh, which is a project that one of our Rotarians, Max Bird, has been working on for a number of years. And what they do is they go over to remote areas of, of Timor and uh, go to a village which has got no water. Uh, and, and the ladies are walking five kilometres into the mountains with buckets on their heads, and so are the children. Mm-hmm. So it means that the kids are missing out on school. So they've gone up there, they've tapped into the springs, they've reticulated the water down to the village, put it into a, a big tank and uh, with a filtration system. And now the school and the village all have clean water. Now the beauty about this, or the, the biggest statistic is that the, they have improved the health of the children by 80%. Wow, it's, 80%. It, it, it is really a wow factor. And, and again, that's why Max gets up in the morning. He, yeah. uh, he goes to Rotary Clubs, he tells his story, he collects money from Rotary Clubs and turns that into tanks and pipes. And, and, and the locals help mm-hmm. and they train the locals to clean the filters and to you, you see photos of the local men building the, the concrete pad for the, the water tank. And then they bring in the water tank and then dig the, the trenches. So it's a community. It's giving people a hand up, mm. you know, not, rather than just bringing them something and saying, here you are, we're, we're not feeding you for the day or we're not providing water for the day. We're providing water for a lifetime, providing food for a lifetime. And the ability to be able to care for that water and that system that you've installed um, for the lifetime as well. We're actually giving the power back to you to be able to care for it. Wow, that is amazing. So So how is that supported then and and how can people support that or is it just supported by Rotary? uh, Look, there's always ways to, um, if if people do want to donate um, to our Rotary Club for a specific purpose, if if that's something that they really are invested in, Mm -hmm. uh, yes, we can do that. Rotary International, uh, it's worldwide. It's got one and a quarter million people in virtually every country. And there is a lot of good stuff happening all over mm. the place. And, and they can get involved financially if they want to or come and say, well, how can we help? Mm. The other one that I've got to talk to you about, because he'll be at the fair, mm. and that's Michael. Uh, Michael runs our furniture shop, and I think I talked about that. Yeah, last yeah, time, yeah. yes. And uh, we've, we've just picked up a, a three-storey house with a spiral staircase. <laughs> I'm sort of <laughs> at a very narrow, long driveway. Uh. I'm driving back going, okay. <laughs> <laughs> how are we going to attack this? But And the beauty about it is that the, the lady in there was moving into a two-bedroom place because mm-hmm. she's of, of age and needs to downsize and the none of the furniture fits in the new place. So they don't want to put it on Gumtree and, mm-hmm. and all those hassles. So they donated to us. Um, people walk into our shop and they can get some 
really nice furniture. Bargains. For yeah. a bargain price. Oh, awesome. So the, the lady at the house is happy, the per- person buying it's happy, we're happy because we're helping people. Mm-hmm. And then at the end of it, we renovate schools in Indonesia. We're doing school number 11, 12 and 13 at the wow. moment. Oh, wow. Wow, fantastic. And it's yeah. just, you know, um, again, Michael is uh, Michael and his team are, are just so invested in the project. They, they're they open every Thursday till about 2, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And whereabouts are they? They're in Gentle Road in Medina. Gentle Road, Medina, so okay. near the golf course. Yep. Um, but bric-a-brac, everything. Mm-hmm. And a lot of it, we, we we haven't got the room to store rubbish. Yeah. Basically. So it, it is... Worthwhile. Good stuff, yeah. So 10, 11, 12, I'm just trying to equate that to ha- how much impact that actually has on the kids there. How many kids are we talking about if we're talking about 12 schools? 12, 13 schools. It, there'd be about 30, at least 30 per child, per school because mm-hmm. they're one or two classroom schools. Mm-hmm. Yep. But when we get there, they're very old, dilapidated buildings and we may have to replace the roof. We may cut holes in walls and put in new windows for light. Uh, go and see the locals to build new desks, paint the walls. But again, using the locals, mm. using the local. And a lot of these um, are run by um, Catholic uh, church organisations mm-hmm. and the nuns, and um, you know, the, especially the ones in Indonesia. Uh, these ones are Muslim schools, and and the but the kids are gorgeous. Mm. They love it, and the, you can see photos of them standing in front of the school with "Thank you, Rotary Club of Quinana" or oh, "Thank you, Rotary." And it's the yeah. gift of education. Mm. I mean, can't be measured, can it? No, no. So, how long have you been building the schools for? Well, at least eight to ten years. Oh, so yeah. you'd be seeing a real impact now. You'd oh, be yeah. seeing people all, who all got all an education where they would otherwise have not had one, and maybe moved on to university yeah. or yeah. how like, how their lives have improved. And we're providing able to provide scholarships, oh. uh, cash scholarships for those uh, students as well. Yeah, there's about uh, three or four each year that we give money to. Amazing. Yeah. Actually, I'll, I'll get Max to call and, and, and give you the full yeah, story. Yeah, we'd, we'd love, love to, to hear, hear that. that. We should get Michael to come along. Please, yeah. Because yeah. I, I can only touch on the... Mm. I don't go over there. I'm, I'm actually the shopkeeper when they go over there. So I okay. don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the hats you wear. Yeah. You shopkeeper. <laughs> What other what other hats do you wear? Member of Rotary. It sounds like you're involved with Bendigo Bank as well. Yeah, I, um, I you're a huge the, part of like Quinana. The director of finance of the golf club now, so I'm enjoying oh, that oh, as well. Yeah. That sounds like a great job, actually. And do a very you, uh, poor golfer. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> do you Damn. ever have a chance to get bored? No. No. Yeah. No. When I'm bored, I'm digging out septic tanks or something at home or, yeah. or building something. <laughs> nice. Nice. We've just come. Uh, one of my favourite projects in Rotary, Chris and I have just come from the breakfast, uh, I think I spoke yeah. of that, that last time, yeah. at the Gilmore College. Yeah. And love the job because we make Milo toast uh, for mm-hmm. the kids. And it'd be... Uh, Milo I'm, and toast or Milo toast? Milo and toast. Don't Milo you, and toast. Because I was like, like hang on a second, <laughs> this is something new, I've never heard about this. A come, Milo toast. Come to your my kids are going to love it. <laughs> She's going to go home uh, and make Milo toast now. So they'll do Vegemite, honey, jam, or, or just plain um, butter, mm-hmm. and then the Milo. Uh, but what I love about it is the, the, the kids. It's good morning, it's thank you, it's have a great day. Yeah. From all these kids. And they're just absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. beautiful. Yeah. You, you, you don't go feeling you, you've gone to do a job, mm. you, you go there. And it, it's just a fill up to the week. Look, yeah. I, I love that you love it because I feel like Gilmore College does sometimes get a bit of a bad reputation. So for you to have such a positive experience there and to experience gratitude yeah. kind of lifts their reputation a bit, which is lovely. Yeah, Rotary work very well with Gilmore and, and they, um, they're they a great school. And, mm-hmm. and the, the problem is if there are issues, mm-hmm. the media wants to talk oh, about it. Yeah. If there are issues in private schools or, or schools where... Uh, we don't like to have issues, mm-hmm. then they're put under the carpet. Oh, I always say that there's issues whenever someone says to me, oh, you know, you talk about a school and they go, oh, they're, they're a bad school. I say that there's issues at every school, school. Yeah. Yeah. every single school, because you are ye- raising um, young minds that, you know, not everybody is the same. And not and everyone... 
at that at a young age knows how to make a positive decision. Yes. Sometimes their emotions get the better of them and they run off in an, in a way that isn't necessarily the best choice to have made. And it doesn't make them a terrible person. It just means that they need a moment to reflect and figure out what they do differently next time. Yeah, and whether you know about it or not, every mm-hmm. school, every school, every school mm-hmm. has a lot of positive stuff going on and mm-hmm. then a lot of stuff that they're working really hard on yeah. and I don't think that there is any bad school. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Gilmore, Gilmore, Gilmore's got a lot more than than others and a lot more than people recognise because they've got their trade area, they've mm. got their you know, area where they've, they've got apprentices, um, almost 90% chance of going through the course in the trade and getting a job in yeah. industry. Yeah, and that's incredible. Yeah. 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 And the principal and staff there are really, really supportive of the yeah. kids. It's are working really fun. hard for positive outcomes yeah. there, absolutely. Yeah, yeah the other um, area we're working with them on uh, is the Andy Volk Trust. Now, Andy and Rita were our charter, and Andy was our charter president in the in 1971 when we first formed. They didn't have any children uh, when um, Rita passed away and then Andy passed away. In his will, he left a trust to the children of Quinana. Oh, wow. And, um, wow. He left his home and whatever money was left, and it was all to go into a trust fund administered by myself and two other Rotarians. And initially we were looking for people that came to us um, or we'd uh, call in for scholarship uh, applications. It was a little bit more difficult to do because we didn't know the process as well as we could. But now we're working with the Gilmore Foundation and they actually uh, assess the children, uh, those students, for scholarships Mm -hmm. and uh, we provide the money out of the trust. Oh, amazing. So again, we apply about $7,000 a year to those scholarships. That's Again, great. Rotary in action. Uh, we're, we're not physically lifting anything, but we're, we're <laughs> a part a of difference. the community. Yeah, such contribution yeah. and know, locally, which is beautiful. And in yeah. so many areas, you're mm. talking about education, you're talking about family events and community, you're talking about um, fire protection and being a part of that. Um, you're also talking about internationally being a part of Timor and making sure that people over there have fresh water. And then you go to Indonesia and you're building schools. Mm. What an impact! Rotary actually has not only in your own community, mm. but you know worldwide. worldwide. And then the strange thing is, we're a little club of twenty eight, twenty nine members, and we really are. Uh, Quinana has got a very good reputation in Rotary state wise and even Australia wise. There are a lot of our members that are very, very active and and, and known by a lot of people. And, uh, like you, a lot of them. Well, Max and and Mike in in terms of the work they do. Yeah. Um, but just uh, one aside on on Gilmore, I I often say to people, I drive up and down Sulphur Road often, and there's maybe between a thousand and fifteen hundred children going home at three o'clock. Now, ninety nine percent of those are going home to look after their siblings, to do their homework, to mm-hmm. help mum, to do whatever. There might be a handful um, that are a little bit, uh, you know, playing up a little bit, mm-hmm. or wandering through the shop. But but generally, 99% of them are great kids. Mm. And and if you could, you know, just um, look at the positives and look at, you know, the, the, the best side of life and yeah. the best side of these kids, which we try and do. Yeah, mm-hmm. and we also, it's the opportunity for that 1% is to offer support. Yeah, yep. offer help. Absolutely. Um, you never know. You know, you're making an impact internationally as well as in your community. You know, personally, you can make an impact. You know, in your street. Mm. <laughs> you know, if you see a kid walking home, you walk with them. If they're in your community, that kind of thing goes a long way to helping. You know, people that you live amongst. So mm. yeah, if it's only one percent and you guys are out there putting your hand out helping them, that's that's amazing. Mm. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. Um, look, I did want to thank you because you know we do rely on support here um, at IPL Radio and I have heard a little whisper that we are building a relationship with uh, the Quinana Rotary. Is that true? Yes, we, um, we were looking, uh, Rotary is always looking at um, promoting itself and what it does and, and we were able to get a, a grant from our district for promotion of Rotary. 
but they said you need to come up with a uh, a project to to spend. They had a thousand dollars per club or something. Uh, we need a, a project that you can sort of. So I spoke to Tris, and and the idea was, uh, you know, what can we what can we do to help you guys? And and so we said, right, we'll we'll do a few radio shows, and we'll give a thousand dollar donation towards what you do, because I know you've got all your overheads and everything mm. else. Look. Yeah. Talk about the impression that we make. Like, there's so many shows other than mine um, that are giving people a voice, mm -hmm. uh, a voice for people with disability, um, LTGBQI, have I missed any letters? Everybody within, under that umbrella as well. Um, you know, there's so many different voices. Um, mental health being mm -hmm. another strong one here as well. And that kind of money really does help support all of those people who want a voice. Um, and we are so really appreciate the fact that you have come on board and partnered with us um, to help us give other people a voice. So thank you so much. Mm. And you never know, you may be around to uh, benefit from the growth of Bendigo Bank. Yeah, mm. well, well yeah. that's a big so name. <laughs> that's, uh, that's what we do. Um, the other one we uh, that I'm involved with uh, only because we're hosting as host parents at the moment, but we have an exchange student over from Norway, mm -hmm. Otilia Bjornstad, and Otilia is um, going to come along to visit you with uh, Genevieve Carr, who's our um, youth uh, director and also uh, her. Uh, mentor mm -hmm. so um, they're organizing to come talk oh, to what language do they speak in norway norwegian norwegian i was gonna say i know someone who speaks dutch so maybe they could come on hold a little dutch show but no. it's not it's norwegian, norwegian. Completely different. No, yeah <laughs> they can understand a fair bit of swedish and danish mm -hmm. yeah um, but uh, i i'm born in holland but uh, i can understand dutch when people speak to me but i can't speak back again yeah it's interesting, isn't it, when parents bring their families over? And I, I know my husband's family, they had um, a divide. So two brothers came over and one was Italian and remaining Italian and they still had all of the traditions, all of their kids and grandkids speak Italian. But my husband's um, grandfather came over and he was now Australian. I am only Australian and none of those traditions or the language continued on. Well, my, my father spoke uh, seven languages, so... He You're kidding! Was okay. yeah, well, from Holt. Excuse me. Being in Holland, they they move through Holland, Germany, France, Italy, Spain, yeah. and, and it's just what you do in Europe. Yeah. Uh, but Mum only spoke um, Dutch, so she was quite interested in in speaking or learning to speak our language, our Australian language, or English language better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So although there were lots of words that we we used because she only only knew the Dutch. Yeah. Even now. Um, We'll, someone will say, go and get the hunt figure and lick, which is dustpan and broom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or, and we, we still say that now, or yeah. kinderstool or, or something. You know, uh, It's quite funny. You have different Dutch names that, because we didn't know what they were called. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, they also have different sayings because my friend often struggles with our speech sometimes and going, what does that mean? But they have a saying that's, oh, well, peanut butter, which means doesn't matter move on okay, okay. <laughs> and i'm like okay and but our sayings if weird. we say that now in our office is oh well peanut butter like, <laughs> move on but yeah they have all different sayings and meanings where yeah. you realize that australians are quite absurd yeah we are absolutely yeah. love it though <laughs> John, thank you so much for joining us. I know we're not going to see, this won't be the last that we see of you. You're going to come in regularly. Let us know what's happening with Rotary and there's so much going on in Quinana that you can share with us. We appreciate your support. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, and thanks for promoting Rotary. Well, yeah. It's a pleasure. Um, we're going to listen to a uh, few of our other supporters now. Fashion Nail. <laughs> 